Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q3 FY23 results conference call of Sheila Foam Limited, hosted by MK Global Financial Services. We have with us today Mr. Rahul Gautam, Managing Director, Mr. Rakesh Chahar, Whole Time Director, Mr. Tushar Gautam, Whole Time Director and Chief Executive Officer, India Business, and Mr. Devinda Ahuja. Group Finance Controller. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phones. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Bhavika Chaudhary from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We would like to welcome the management and thank them for this opportunity. I shall now hand over the call to the management for the opening remark. Over to you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Bhavika. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Bhavika, once again, and uh, thanks to NK Global Financial Services for hosting this earnings call. And a very good afternoon to everyone joining us today. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this conference call for Q3 and the nine months ended of this year, this financial year FY23. Uh, let me just begin with uh, by saying that both FY22 and FY23 were full of extreme turmoil. We know what happened last year, the close, the close downs and then the opening up. In such conditions and such uh, varying conditions, uh, actually quarters to, co to corresponding quarter comparisons become uh, very distorted. The nine months to nine months, just being a little bit a longer period, is a better reflection of the performance. I'm happy to share that your company has registered a growth, albeit a small percentage only, and that too primarily on account of retail inflation. I'm also satisfied to share with you that in spite of continuing fluctuations in raw materials, we have seen sustained expansion in gross margins. However, at the EBITDA level, the numbers show a sub-10% performance. And this is primarily on account of some expenses, which can be termed as one-off, however, have to be uh, adjusted to the expense side um, according to the index. Uh, there was an increased advertisement to restart uh, post dull or closed uh, COVID period. Um, there were some explore, exploratory M&A expenses, which are again <clears throat> one-off. And, uh, but however, as per any index, they have to be accounted for. And there was also some non-cash mark-to-market forex losses, which are clearly one-off and also notional, and they are non-cash. <clears throat> if we account for all this, uh, we would see that uh, we are reasonably above the previous period. The COVID period had also put a stop to all kinds of market surveys, researches, et cetera. As soon as it got over, uh, the industry restarted the process, and the findings were very encouraging. The shift from unorganized to organized continues. And this was after the this, uh, research was after the lapse of uh, two and a half years. Um, and this is, this is very encouraging. Uh, second, uh, that market share of your company, uh, Sleep World brand and the other brand, considerably increased and it further consolidated its leadership position. I'm also um, happy to share that the subsidiaries of the company in Australia and Spain are continuously increasing their market share as they grow. Both have different realities. However, they are performing well. Both have expansion plans and projects which will come on stream by the, by the middle of this year, and this will further strengthen 
add their capacities and strengthen their position as far as those markets are concerned. <coughs> we also recognize that uh, Shira Form is not only an economic organization, but also a social organism, and sustainability is of utmost importance. I'm also happy to share with you that we are on track with our ESG or sustainability programs, and our VRSR report is under preparation for, for this year. Um, with this, I hand over to Bhavika, and we will be happy to answer um, the questions that may be there. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nihal Mahesh Cham from Nuvama. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good evening to the management. Thank you so much. Uh, Nihal, you'll have to speak a bit louder. Just uh, am I audible? Better. Thanks. So, sorry. My first question was, uh, so you've alluded that there was a base impact uh, yeah, because of COVID last year, but if we compare the mattress volumes even to pre-COVID, uh, there is a slight fall which has happened. So just wanted to understand this is purely because of the current sentiment, but there has been a shift uh, in demand between quarters because of certain marriage-related dates or any, any other aspect that you may want to highlight. I must, uh, I must confess that uh, the, um, the voice levels which are coming to me are... Um, Rather, uh, rather low. Um, so, if let, let's just repeat the question. Uh, you say so, um, the mattress volumes are lower, and the question is that is it because of the market sentiments or is it because of any shift in the in the in the consumers? Is that correct? Yes, uh, consumer sentiment or generally there has been a shift in the wedding dates also seen between Q3 and Q4 if there was any element of that uh, element. Because if I'm comparing our volumes to pre-COVID, not from last year where you highlighted, maybe there was a covid based impact. So just uh, comparing it from that perspective. So, Nihal, thanks, thanks for the question. And uh, I must say that this, uh, you know, the audio is uh, not, not so clear. However, uh, let me just say that um, yes, there is a little bit of a drop in the in the mattress volumes um, as far as uh, we are concerned. Um, however, when we when we compare it to uh, the kind of surveys that etc. that have been done, uh, it appears it appears that there is um, there is some uh, changes in the market as far as uh, uh, the size of the market is concerned. But this is purely temporary, purely on account of uh, uh, on the on on account of inflation, and if there is any aberration, which or any apparent aberration that is uh, seeming there, it's only uh, it's only temporary, and it'll, it'll shift and it'll go back, you know, because the trends are very clear in the in the research. Understood. So, if I could ask that. Uh... Uh, have, have the trends in the month of Jan improved or currently are still seeing the uncertainty sustained? If you could just give some, some sense of that. So they have, um, uh, I don't know how much can I say, but they have drastically improved. And, um, and that's all. I mean, uh, the month of Jan is just over, but that's, the, the situation has, has considerably improved. So my last question was on the gross margin side. You highlighted that there has been a significant reduction in both TDI, uh, specifically in polyon. So what proportion of the old inventory did we end up uh, using this quarter and uh, how much of an impact that had in terms of the uh, limitation in the gross margin improvement? So I think I, I mentioned that uh, even in the quarter that's gone by, the gross margin has definitely improved. 
However, when we come down to the EBITDA level, there is a, a bit of a drop. Um, and this is on account of raw materials fluctuating, however, moving uh, slightly downwards. When we come, uh, as we move forward, um, the same trend is, is continuing. And um, I, I would say that even if we account for the opening stocks that, that we have, there, there would be um, a positive uh, impact uh, as far as Q4 is concerned. Just to clarify, so the current gross margins in a way more or less reflect our uh, current uh, the current pricing in both the raw materials. That's right. Perfect. So that's very helpful. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your touchstone phones at this time. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, sir. Am I audible? Yes, this is. Thanks. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah, hi, sir. This is Ritesh from Investec, uh, not a digital investor. Uh, sir, a couple of questions. Uh, so first is, uh, uh, if you could detail what is our strategy to recoup volumes. Uh, so basically, what is the end customer or the end, end channel that we are looking at, uh, basically to increase volumes? Uh, that's that's one. And what I'm referring to over here is just something beyond EBOs and MBOs that we are already doing. Uh, that's that's the first question. Uh, so second question is on update on the expansion plan um, along with the timelines for Jabalpur, Spain, and Australia. Uh, you did indicate mid of middle of this year, but uh, some specifics would help. Uh, third question is on inorganic growth. Uh, basically, what's the status? Uh, first is on the growth engines, and it has four buckets. Uh, metrics for every Indian, uh, the exports run rate, railways, the current run rate, and online channel, the current run rate. And I have a fifth question, which is on new initiatives. Uh, so uh, would be great, sir, if you could uh, please uh, help with this. So thank you, Ritesh. I think you've gone through the entire uh, portfolio uh, that we have. Um, but let me just first begin with, with the first question, and that is on the volumes part of it. Um, I just want to say that, you know, sleep well, we have been operating uh, through the EBOs and the footfalls, et cetera, have been challenging as far as in the recent part of the past is concerned. We are well entrenched on that. Uh, footfalls, as I said, uh, if I look at January, have begun to increase. Uh, that will automatically increase the volumes. Um, there is an expansion plan uh, for the uh, for the EPOs, and um, that's almost about 400 to 500 uh, extra outlets per year. And then that, that's also on track. Um, I must also add that, uh, of course, Slipple was not selling through the uh, uh, through the MBOs, which are also which continue to be in large number. Uh, we address those markets uh, uh, via our, our other brand, which is uh, uh, Featherform and, and, and Starlight. Uh, now that we have uh, reached out to or spread out to all of them, uh, our real uh, uh, good push as far as MBOs is going to happen. Um, and we expect that the first initiative of expanding EBOs and um, putting through the NBOs, both will increase our volumes, uh, and that's our strategy for that. As far as uh, Australia and Spain is concerned, so let me take Australia first. Australia has already been doing, has been having a, almost a 10%, 12% increase, both in its volume as well as its in top line. And um, the reasons for that, um, um, as we see, is, uh, um, you know, people spending more and more as far as home improvement uh, sites are concerned. Now, uh, we expected that COVID uh, would finish and uh, uh, this will also slow down, but it has not uh, because people are not traveling so much. People have money in their pocket and people want to. Besides this, it's, it's also the imports that uh, Australia was having. Uh, and, you know, with the sentiments like Australian made, uh, et cetera, those uh, imports have been impacted, um, you know, especially imports from China, and there were also some imports from Europe. 
And we see that as a very good sign. And in spite of a mature market, this expansion will continue to grow. Uh, or this, uh, this sentiment will continue to grow. On uh, our plant, which is being set up in the, the, the second forming plant, which is being set up in Adelaide, uh, that has already been installed and it will be commissioned by the first week of March. And we will start then getting a little more aggressive as far as um, the market share is, is, is concerned. And we believe that there is, there is a lot, uh, lot of um, imports and, and other things which can be, which can be sort of uh, uh, being be catered by, by us and therefore increase our presence. Yeah. Spain, uh, I have said this many times before, um, we are a very small part of that large market, so only 1%. And therefore, that even though the European market uh, slumped by almost 25-30% uh, during the Ukraine war or continuing even after the Ukraine war, uh, in our company, we registered just a 10% drop, which has also from January onwards begun to pick up. In fact, the entire uh, order books for in January and February were, are completely, uh, were completely full, still filled up. and in February continue to be filled up. Uh, we have expansion um, projects there uh, where uh, the current capacity will be increased. And so today what we are doing is about uh, 13, 14,000, 12, 12 to 13,000 tons per annum. This will go up to about 17,000 tons per annum. And again, because we are a small part, we expect that all this will be consumed uh, in market. Um, returning back to India, you have also said about the inorganic part of it. So I think the explorations continue, uh, some encouraging, uh, but eventually these things happen when they uh, they have to happen. But I can only say that they, that's encouraging. Um, on the initiative that Silafon was doing, like uh, a mattress for every Indian, again, we have started to receive the machinery, which was... Uh, uh, which was delayed on account of the war and before that on account of COVID. We started receiving that. We expect somewhere end of this year that project in Jabalpur to begin to uh, get installed and then commissioned uh, soon soon thereafter. Railways um, have been good progress. Um, I think railways have uh, um, also now clearly stated that the product that we supply them is the preferred product for making the coaches, uh, and the quantum is increasing month after month. Um, anything else? I don't know. You have asked many uh, questions. We could never miss out on it. Uh, sir, uh, exports was the other one, and online channel. And sir, if, if you can please help with a, a run rate or something for exports, or railways, and only channel, uh, basically the online channel. So, uh, so run rate on railways is about eight to ten crores per month at the moment. Yeah. And um, exports, um, I would say that uh, there has been ups and downs. Um, a couple of reasons we have talked about in the previous uh, meetings. Uh, one was that the infrastructure uh, coming up to speed as far as the uh, the supply of orders was concerned. Uh, and the second part is that uh, um, U.S., which is the largest uh, recipient of these exports, uh, has also been going through its own uh, um, inflation and, and a bit of recession that's been there. Uh, recently, uh, there has been um, the biggest uh, exhibition in the U.S., uh, for mattresses, uh, it was in Las Vegas. Our people were there, and uh, there is. I mean, I, I all, at the moment I can say the sentiments are, are encouraging. They are committed to uh, looking at or, or creating a source uh, besides China and in India. We would be the preferred supplier. However, there is not too much to talk about it. Let's say in the last quarter. Uh, or in this quarter, but I think the year would finish at about 40 crores or so. Uh, it's definitely a little, little dissatisfying, should have been more, uh, but 40 and the coming year, I think, should see a jump up to about 100. Yeah. Online, um, 
we are tra treading along or trudging along uh, at a at a reasonable pace. Um, I think the year should end at about what uh, Rakesh said. No, uh, online. So online may cross. Uh, so online should also cross hundred crores. Uh, however, uh, as as I said, we also changed our strategy a little bit. You know, when we were doing it uh, with a different brand, and now we're doing it with with Sleepwell, and we have found a way to uh, to uh, reduce uh, or, or or almost remove any kind of friction between online and offline, and that is that is picking up. But so this year we should close at about a hundred or, or over hundred, and uh, the next year. Or, would be at least 50 to 60 percent more than that. Uh, thank you so much, sir. New initiatives for into living room are uh, looking at so far as the avenue. Uh, that was the last one, and probably I'll jump back to you uh, again with I have some second degree questions, sir. Maybe I will take that question on so far. Uh, I presume you would have asked many questions for many other people, so that's all right. You know, <laughs> I would have referred to it. So, the sofas, we are um, um, manufacturing of sofas. I would be able to talk on this better uh, the next time. Uh, some initiatives on, but as I said, that um, it will be better if I talk, talk next time on it. However, on the refurbishment of sofas, which continues to be a big business, it's fragmented business. It is a um, very unorganized business, and our initiative to put all that together is uh, now taking shape. I mean, at the moment, I'll share that a pilot is on, where the proposal is that we, we that as in Sleepwell, will pick your sofa up and do it, refurbish it, and return it back in three to four days' time. Sure, sir. Uh, this is very helpful, sir. Uh, thanks for, answer, for all the answers. I just joined back with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Forum Gosar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. I just have one question. Uh, we have seen an increase in revenue from the technical team business. So I just want to understand from where the demand is coming from. Like, did we onboard any new clients? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can I just have your name once again, please? Forum. Okay. Thank you. So um, the technical form, um, the primary um, expansion in order has come from the auto sector. And uh, we all know that the auto sector has been, uh, for the last couple of months, has been doing extremely well or continues to do well. and. Uh, we have almost about what, 60, 70, 75 percent uh, share in that market. And uh, the growth in the technical side, and we are expecting that that growth will, will continue as that expands. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Siddharth, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. So, uh, actually, just wanted to ask you that last time you had mentioned that our, you know, management's uh, focus is to increase the productivity of uh, the outlets. So, uh, I mean, have we been successful in increasing the footfall? And if not, then when can we expect that to start? So, sir, so thanks. Thanks for that question. Um, yes, our efforts are on the beginning to show some results. And the, first, the productivity has been increased on two, uh, two actions. One is to increase the footfalls coming into the showrooms, and the second is to increase the conversion of whatever is kind of coming in. The second thing first, conversion, we have, uh, we have taken the help of a company called Quest and got some uh, sales uh, advisors from, from them, which are uh, which have been placed uh, at almost about 30, 35 percent of the of the stores, and they are training uh, the people as well as helping to convert whoever is uh, whoever is coming in. And that conversion, we can see that 
the percentage is increasing month on month basis as far as footfalls are concerned the only way is uh, promotions advertisements ptl atl activities and you would have noticed that uh, recently we have begun advertising on the television uh, and uh, even at a local level and we we believe that the uh, footfalls will will increase all right so that's it from my side thank you and uh, of course uh, as i already mentioned uh, to ritesh earlier uh, we are expanding our uh, the number of showrooms uh, which definitely will increase the total number of footfalls uh, which which we cater to all right sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ritesh shah an individual investor please go ahead yeah uh, hi sir sorry to bother you again uh, so i just wanted to understand uh, the market sizing uh, so when we are looking at the 15 20000 crores of total market uh, i appreciate what we are doing on the ebos and mbos Uh, but how about the market basically say for the likes of pepper fry ikea home lane uh, i think that's that's also incrementally a trend uh, so how, how do we approach basically tapping this particular market or are we already there and if we are already there how does the economics work uh, so so that's the first question so do you, do you want to complete the the questions or should i Uh, so this is I'll, I'll just uh, like go on to you sir okay thanks um so ritesh this is um, um as i am understanding the question you saying that the likes of ikea and pepper fry which are primarily furniture or furnishing uh, outlets uh, you know they that they, they they do cater to um mattresses and uh, how are we making our presence felt in that uh, in that mm-hmm. segment so let me yes. just say that uh, we have already begun looking at uh, what what we call as furniture first stores and uh, these are stores which are not necessarily exclusive uh, mattress stores uh, however do furniture as first and um, and consequently sell mattresses along with uh, uh, with the with the beds that they sell and uh, that expansion has already begun we are present in how many markets uh, would be be present at the moment so about 2000 we have already got our presence but as i said those are not exclusive and therefore that is done under the feather foam brand which is endorsed by sleepwell and uh, that's been reasonably well accepted so our uh, just as to sum up um, our response to the ikeas and the pepper fries and all that is to go and be present in the furniture first stores uh sure. so my question was uh, basically if you look at the mobile population or say tier 1 tier 2 uh, i think uh, probably the population which goes to individual stores it it might be reducing uh, i'm just uh, giving a hypothetical scenario and there will be more and more people who might be going to home lane pepper fry ikea but then they will just go to buy a curtain uh, or something else and they end up buying a mattress uh, so from a sample sizing standpoint if we have to look at the marketplace uh, uh, so is is home is is furniture first uh, the solution that we are looking at or are we looking at something beyond that to tap the larger marketplace so i agree with you that there are some some stores which are complete furnishing stores i agree with you that there is a mobile pop- population uh, which may be very short on time and uh, would not go from a store to store and would want to have a one stop place and and do that uh, but however those people we would be attracting them maybe more with sleepwell at home or through the e-commerce Uh, platform uh, that 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 we are operating on, you know, and uh, I I would say that uh, I mean for us really to get into uh, a full fledged furnishing store at the moment is is not enough. 
Sure, sir. Uh, and sir, my second question was uh, specifically on the EPE form or uh, mattress for every Indian, what we have indicated. Uh, I just wanted to check, is it for the first time that it's happening, something of this sort in India, or has it been tried by any of our peers uh, in the past? No, no, no. E, uh, I don't know. You're connecting the EPE with that mattress for every Indian. So EPE is a completely different product, for, you know, which is different from polyurethane foam. Do we do some EPE stuff? Yes, we do. Is it cheaper? It is. Um, however, uh, the availability part of it is still a challenge. You know, it's an extremely light material to be transported all over the place. Our mattress for every Indian foray is primarily to look at people who are not using any kind of mattresses, modern mattresses at the moment. They may be using cotton mattresses, they may be using dharis, chatais, etc. And there are two challenges to it. One is to make the product affordable for them. And the second thing is to make it available to them to where they are, uh, whether in a tehsil block or a cluster of villages that they are. So our project, which is coming up in uh, Jabalpur, the new technology that we talk about will help us in both these aspects of affordability and as well as accessibility or making it available to those places. Has it been done uh, before? To the best of my knowledge, no. And uh, generally, it's it's just the, um, you know, the way that happens that when you have a new product, a new modern mattress coming up, it goes to the big towns. Then it starts filtering down to tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five kind of levels. Here, we're just trying to go the other way around, you know, uh, which is start from the bottommost area and try to uh, work upwards. And... Um, and hopefully bridge the gap here. Uh, right, sir, possible. So, sir, you indicated it's it's PU foam, right? Uh, for mattress for every Indian, that's what we're looking at? Yes, it, I mean, okay. it could possibly have one or two other materials, for uh, for example, but uh, primarily it is for the polyurethane foam uh, with the new technology that, that we would be making. Okay, and sir, any timelines over here? I, I presume it's linked with the Jabalpur expansion. Look, uh, it is. Um, like a launch. So, Ritesh, I, um, I said that right in the beginning, um, this project got delayed on account of COVID, then it got delayed on account of the Ukraine war because the steel, et cetera, needed to come from there. Our supplier of this uh, technology is based in UK, uh, but we have begun receiving parts of, uh, of the machine. We expect it uh, to, to start getting installed any time by the end of the year. Sure. And so last, I had a bookkeeping question. Would it be possible uh, for us to quantify the one-off variables which you indicated on uh, the non-cash M2M, uh, forex losses, exploratory M&A expenses? Uh, I think you indicated three variables, or probably I can take it offline. Uh, I would uh, I would say that if you really want to understand that in depth, it would be better offline. However, since you talked about the non-cash one, um, I, I would say, you know, it is like um, like hedging for the equity that we have invested in um, in Spain. And uh, that equity at, at the time that we hedged it, which was something like September, um, at that time the, uh, the euro was just falling. And it was being expected that this war would continue forever and the euro would always be under threat. We wanted to protect that. We wanted that uh, that investment of ours. Generally, we do not uh, we do not hedge equities, but we did that um, because the euro was, and it was a special condition. So when we hedged that, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, number one, the uh, euro has got back some. So at that time, it was some 78. Today, it's 87. And uh, there is, uh, you know, mark to market, it's gone up by a certain amount. Now, the index says that you have to have mark, mark to market, and this will be charged to, to the expenses. So, however, uh, when you have, uh, you have that investment in euros, there is an interest uh, that the bank is giving us, which is almost about a crore or a quarter, and that, that interest, is 
as per index not it has to be uh, in the other is other risk incomes and oci and therefore in tax so you get a double whammy out of it and it's all notional there is no uh, cash in fact there is no nothing that's one of the examples i i can offline explain um, uh, the other areas where uh, on account of this issue we oh, we have been impacted here. sure sir this is very very helpful thank you so much for sharing that yeah thank you participants who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touch tone phones the next question is from the line of dharma venkatesan kb an individual investor please go ahead thanks for the opportunity good evening sir and hope you are doing well thank you yes please go ahead uh, sir uh, my question is regarding the demand in europe so how the things have settled down are we seeing uh, demand slightly uh, are the demand is there any good green shoots in the demand and how the, how the things shaping up there for us so um demand in europe has definitely slumped uh the market uh, if we would look at the market let me first begin by saying that it is the largest market in the world the entire european union but that market has slumped by 25% we fortunately being just 1% of that market and having our own strengths so even if the market size has shrunk our share as the potential is already going up and has the potential of increasing i mean we are far far away from uh, from uh, making any kind of an impact on the entire market okay sir and my second question is regarding that in the presentation it was mentioned that there was a one time marketing expense so is this one time or are we going to spend more on brand building from now on like is this going to be a new number going forward so thank you for raising it uh, look it's not entirely all one time uh, there was a time when it was zero time uh, you know during the covid and corona times and then when you want to restart you obviously have to do a little more than necessary to to get the momentum back and that's exactly what is being done on the marketing and sales side uh, would it become uh, completely zero no uh, but would it be at this level also no and it will settle down at normal levels as we kind of go on but it is this um, this part this time of this period when you had to kick start it um, and uh, that's the impact okay sir so suppose if we are looking at um, at a longer uh, time frame let's say 5 years or 10 years what is the percentage of sales that we are we would ideally like to have for marketing expense so uh, generally over, i mean the historically it has been about 4% um but as as i think our margins expand uh we would like it to go up to go up to 5% okay sir fine sir thank you for the opportunity and all the best for the thanks. coming quarter sir thanks thanks thank you we have the next question from the line of resham jain from dsp investment managers please go ahead uh hi hi good afternoon sir so good afternoon uh, resham hi sir so few clarification and a uh, couple of questions so first is uh, jabalpur when you said end of the year is fi 23 or uh, like december 23 so it's uh, <laughs> the installations will begin at that time uh and um, it may take still a couple of months so i'm uh, i mean when i said i meant really the end of uh, the calendar year uh, however it i mean if i would say that a full streamlined good production fy24 that fy25 25 on fy24 is right now right right okay this is fy uh, right now is fy23 uh, sorry fy24 yeah. is is not not fy24 fy24 that is first um, starting from 1st april 2024 okay that means uh, next year only okay um and so jabalpur plant will have what kind of uh, capacities and uh, what kind of uh, uh, revenue one can expect from this plant let's say through 2 3 years down the line 
I will be making a wild guess, absolutely, uh, if two years time. Uh, but I would I would say that uh, about three hundred and fifty to four hundred crores. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, the second question is on exports. Uh, last time uh, you mentioned that uh, this plant has the capability, uh, the export uh, dedicated plant has a capability to do uh, close to um, uh, one one to one point five crore per day. So is that understanding right? Uh, which means that uh, the plant must be utilizing uh, must be utilized at close to ten. 12 or 15 percent utilization only currently export plant so uh, the, uh, the Jabalpur plant is for manufacturing no, of sorry, I, am, I mean the, the basic sorry, I technology export plant sir. the export plant no, which is close sorry. to Mumbai is that the one that you're referring to yes 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 that yes. one you mentioned last time that yes, you can do yes. 1 to 1.5 crore per day so that's operating at just 10, 15 percent utilization right now. Is that correct? Absolutely. That, that is correct. That's okay. correct. So uh, that plant must be make, making losses right now, correct? At this utilization level, it's hard to make money. You are you're right uh, that uh, if I just drew up the PNL for that particular plant, it would be making losses. Uh, fortunately, we have not invested uh, too much uh, in the cap capex side. Um, there is no forming process that takes place, which is the maximum. It's on rented premises, and of course, has uh, mattress manufacturing and compressing and putting them in a box, etc., and and doing that. Um, so, yes, as a standalone, it it is making process. Okay, right. So the third question is on uh, Spain business. Uh, uh, you, um, uh, what you told us is that uh, it's a very small market. We are expanding capacity by uh, some 5,000 odd tons. But uh, is there a possibility for you to expand there uh, in like a step jump kind of thing over there, or this will be like 20-30 percent, 40 percent increase in capacity like that only, given a significantly large opportunity available over there? Um, we're here. This is about Spain, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, the opportunity is much bigger than that. What I'm I'm talking about. Number one, this plant is located in a small town or in an area, industrial area, where there is production of sofas, mattresses, shoes, uh, and a lot of furniture. We don't even cater to 10% of the requirement of that area. This, this, I'm just painting the picture to tell you uh, that what the opportunity is like. Plus, this is the only plant in that in, in the entire European. No, there is one more in Italy, small one, which uses a completely green technology for manufacturing foam. Europeans are the um, um, the characteristic of green technology has a lot of uh, lot of uh, meaning to to them, you know, and therefore this is the only plant that that is there. Uh, third, it's also not too far away from the U.S. There have been exports from there. However, because the entire U.S. market has been a bit down, uh, the exports have have come down. But that opportunity has to come, will come. So with these three, three, four advantages that it has, and having a very small share, and expanding its capacity to at least 50% more than what it is doing now, um, the future is only uh, extremely bright for it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the last one, sir, is on uh, competition. Uh, uh, has it because uh, on online space we have seen a lot of players and uh, it seems that uh, some kind of rationality has come back in the market. Uh, so any comments on the competition on the online side and few of the online players have now started opening offline uh, mode as well. Uh, so how are you seeing the overall competition both on 
online as well as offline side? So, Rishim, uh, point number one that I want to say is that uh, as it has happened at other places in the world where online started much earlier, there is, there is a, what should I say, a, a dynamic balance between offline and online that will come about. Uh, generally, it has been 15% of the total market. During the COVID times, and I'm talking of US, it went up to 20 plus percent, but now has slid back to 7, 17, 18%. And those people measure their numbers uh, pretty accurately. Therefore, as, as we go ahead, or, or let's say, what do we see the end game like? Uh, there would be online and offline, but the online will be about anything between 15 to 20%. If it's any upwards of 15%, I think that will be a great achievement. Currently, uh, we should be tracking at more like 7, 8, 9% or 10%, something of that order. So there is that. Now, the second point is that as far as online is concerned, we, um, Sheila Foam and Sleepwell are also present on it and reasonably strongly present on it. We took our time to get our strategy right. Now we have the strategy and we, we would be doing that. Because of this balance between online and offline, all the people who started online and will continue in the matters business will have, will have the temptation to go offline too because 85% business is going to be there and 15% is only going to be online. So they've, uh, you know, that's, that's one part. The, the second part is that online businesses have been losing money. And with this change in the sentiments and not only the sentiments of the investors, but also the investors saying that we uh, money costs and therefore we cannot continue to burn money. They have to go offline. So this will happen, and uh, online will become or has become just another channel for to reach out to the consumers or to the customers. Otherwise, there is nothing more to it. Um, of course, it came, it made its Allah and noise and this and that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, just to reach the 100%, this will have a 10 to 15% uh, way or um, mode of reaching the consumer. Okay, sir. Perfect. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Again, sir, one last question. Uh, sir, what is it that we are scouting uh, when we are saying that we are open to inorganic growth? Uh, and and any numbers that you can help uh, us with either on the leverage side or whether the uh, equation uh, can it be EPS dilutive or will ensure that it will be EPS accretive? <clears throat> Ritesh, you always ask very difficult questions. Um, let me say that on the you know, what are we looking for? So as far as India and um, the Indian market is concerned, we look for businesses which would have, which are consumer facing. Uh, that is something that we think or we believe uh, that we understand, which is the consumer. Um, we understand the diversity in India uh, that exists and by our sheer presence and the number of years that we have been here, I think we do an okay job for that. So we are happy to look at businesses which are consumer facing and which would align themselves well with what, what we do. As far as um, outside of India is concerned, we would look at businesses which manufacture foam because that alignment comes easily uh, to us, which is procurement of material, formulations, technologies to manufacture, and just to uh, sell phone to other people. We do not understand the markets, the consumer outside India, and we will hesitate or by, by and large, we will not touch any business uh, which does that. That is as far as the strategy or our philosophy is concerned. Uh, on the Indian uh, side, and, and let me just say the opportunities are, are there. Are, are, are. 
present. Uh, at this point of time, I may be constrained to speak anything more about it. Of course, our effort will be that it is uh, uh, a bit accretive. Uh, it should help, uh, may not help right away, but that will at least um, you know, on, a, on, a, on a stable basis, as soon as stability happens, etc., it should be should be accretive. It should give us uh, more strength uh, in the market. So I, at this time, uh, Ritesh, I'll not be able to say anything more. Other than that, because this, you know, most of the times these things are work in progress and uh, do take their time. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the answer, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Amit Bora from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, I had one question on uh, on foam core business as well as uh, technical foam uh, uh, business in India. Uh, it has seen a sharp decline in in uh, in more than twenty percent almost decline. Uh, any reason you want to highlight, or is it only the high base of uh, the the last uh, quarter sequential quarter? Um, also, the realization in in the same uh, seems to have declined by around seven, uh, two percent and seven percent. Uh, so, how does this price uh, uh, transfer, or uh, is it, how does this happen in terms of uh, uh, fall in raw material? How do you transfer the pricing uh, to the end customer? So, is it on the foam core side or the technical foam uh, side? Which side? Because they they are two separate. Uh... Um, segments. Um, which one, or or is it both that you're both foam core? Yeah, yeah, foam core. Yeah. So um, as far as foam cores is concerned, they are generally uh, sold to more, um, let's say, not unorganized, but let's say lesser organized uh, people, and uh, and it's it's a business through uh, the distribution channels, and therefore the pricing is completely. Uh, determined by us, um, and we change it as as and when we think that it is the right thing to do. Uh, on the technical, however, on the technical form side, the customers are uh, B2B, more established, some cases even bigger than us, and um, we have formulae for them, which is a rise and fall clause, and um, we go, go along that way. Uh, we progress that. Yeah, these numbers that you see, the shifts that you see, um, honestly, uh, I mean, the, um, the quarter is too short a time really for looking, especially when the fluctuations are uh, far and uh, many. And so, you know, there is inventory which plays a part. There is changing prices uh, which play a part. Um, in the long run, eventually they get passed on. But in a short term, and the way that the accounting is done, you may have this feeling or experience that we have shortchanged ourselves or we have reduced uh, uh, somewhere as far as our data um, points are concerned. Um, in this uh, world quarter is too small a period. But we have mechanisms in both to account for changing raw material prices. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. <laughs> 